Hey folks, Joe here. Thanks for tuning in. I'm with this crazy guy. We're out in the woods here. Seems like I've had a visitor since I've been last here. Uh, I was my my rocks are all rearranged, different spot, and the most telltale. I was written a note on this piece of wood. Okay, so I got here. I could tell things were different already. He tried started to put up a little wall there. He tied something up. Um, my shelter looks different. And then this. Hello, my name is Mark. I am into the outdoors as well. Here till the end of March. Hope it's okay. I crash here a couple times. He leaves his phone number, which is not my area code here. So the area code, like I said, here, take this. The area code is not uh, from here, from where, where I live. And he says he's here till the end of March, which is kind of confusing for me. Uh, I don't know, Mark, if you watched my channel or if you just kind of found this place. There's this old water container that he wrote dry wood on and stuck a bunch in. I had some stashed here previously. He must have saw that and did that. Huh, it's a little strange. I don't really care too much, but it is a weird feeling, I'll tell you that much. But anyways, whatever, no big deal. I'm going to re rearrange my, my rocks back to the way they should be and um, cut down whatever he put up. And then get to enjoy my day out here, cook up some food, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, we'll go, go over some bushcraft knife skills. So, I want my rocks the way that I had them. Like a three sided fire pit. Man, what the heck? With the big ones on the back to try to push the heat back to me. We're at like nine, negative nine degrees today, Celsius. This is here for some reason. And what it, what is this? Maybe this was a table at one time. Okay, well, watch out, man. That's strange, very strange. Okay, now that I feel like master of my domain again, it's getting a little warm. Got the old Fall Raven granite shirt on, the wool jacket. Okay, so, yeah, let's look at my new knife and let's play with it. Let's beat it through some wood. Sounds like some fun, eh? I've used this knife a few times, I had it on one other video. This is the Tradesman, the Adventure Sworn Tradesman. They got their Adventure Sworn logo on the spine, down near, under the handle, so when you're scraping a ferro rod or whatever, it's not gonna scrape off. There is Desert Ironwood Burl with orange G10 uh, liners. They might be more micarta, I'm not sure. I think G10. And then you can see here, this is a 1 8 thick, 1 8 inch thick, and it tapers down to probably 3 30 seconds right around there. This is his take on a French trade knife, a very popular design that's been around for a long time, and it's uh, proven. So you can see the ergos. But Adventure Sworn has the best ergonomics, uh, bar none, uh, in, in, on knife handles. Look at that. It's like a. I'm trying to keep it in focus. The blade is about five inches long, and it's very, very wide at the bottom. You can see, like bigger than like an inch and a half. Scandy grind, shallow Scandy. Really pretty knife. And the thing about it is, I ain't afraid to beat this thing up. 
we're gonna we're gonna cross baton today. We're going to baton. We're gonna stab. This tip is quite thin. I have no reservations about plowing it through some wood. Um, yeah, great ergonomics. Like I said, beautiful looking blade, beautiful handle. The sheath is just as good. What I've come to expect from Adventure Sworn. So it's in the it's in the sheath. Sorry, just poked myself in the eyeball. A good sheath should hold your knife like this, not let it fall out. And then when it's time to pull it out, still be relatively easy to pull out. Scout, you can't, you can't, you, you. Just taking my firewood again. Came with a matching fire steel. Fire steel loop on the, on the sheath. The fire steel is desert ironwood and orange to match my knife. What I do to keep it secure Put it in, take a little piece of shot cord, and go around it like that, twist it a little bit, and it's not going anywhere. I can use this knife as a dangler. I can take this dangler right off, or I can dangle it like that, either way. I like Adventure Sworn a whole lot. I've been good friends with Cody, the uh, the owner, for a long time. So let's go. Oh, oh, they got, they got a little Adventure Sworn logo on the back there. Okay, let's go beat the crap out of this thing. I want to make a fire. So I did bring a saw. I didn't bring an axe at all, so I could use this a lot. But let's go around and see if we we don't have to use a saw, I don't think. We'll go around and see what we can do. But we'll baton. Baton like hoy. I already do have some dry firewood here. So maybe I'll get the initial fire going. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, and before I forget, I have a really cool surprise giveaway um, value, uh, high value gear that I'm going to give away in this video because... I'm about to reach 250,000 subscribers on the YouTubes. Be sure to stay tuned because it's a, it's a hefty prize and you will not want to miss it. When I'm putting my belt knife on, especially with a dangler, I do want it to be set back a bit. So here's my first belt loop. And if I put it through the first one, it'll be here. Kind of in the front, right by my crotch. I kind of want it back here behind this belt loop, like that far back, right? So I'll take the, the belt out, two loops, put it through and then throw it back there. That way it's out of my way. It is a dangler so it's going to dangle as I walk. I personally like it back there. She looks good too. Woo! If I have to grab another piece of wood to uh, cross baton a tree down, I'll do that. If I can pull a tree down, I'll do that. We shall see when I see a tree. One maple will do the trick. Maple kind of what the heck is this now? Man, I'm finding all sorts of crap now. What is this nonsense? What is the point of this? Tell me. Electrical tape wrapped around the tree. Like that, like, what is going on? I'm here a lot, and I, uh, I've never seen that before. It's relatively new, it's still sticky. Craziness. Anyways, find a maple. Maples tend to grow in these clumps of two, three, four, five, however many, and one of them usually is dead, and it's about wrist thick. So, it's a good, I'm gonna, I see a clump right here potential. While they're not in a clump, they are most likely from the same root. Here's two live ones. Here's a dead maple right next to it. So I'm going to try to just pull it down. No. Okay. So we're going to have to cross baton that. That means I need to find a, a sturdy baton. I want to do like a 45. Again, this is a scandy grind. Remember that. There's nothing wrong with that doing this kind of stuff with a skinny grind as long as the heat treat is on point. An Adventure Sworn heat treat is on point. <laughs> My baton wasn't so sturdy. I just want to go around the whole tree and do this and weaken it. Or weaken my baton some more. That baton got shredded.
Here you can really see the method and the angle that I was using to chop this wood down. We're gonna process this whole thing using just a knife, but at this skinny part, it's just easier to do that. And once it comes down here, we'll start cross batoning. But in all honesty, even if I had an ax and a saw and everything, I would still be just doing this for the first little bit, the small pieces. Watch out, buddy. No, not for you. Here. All right, cross baton in time. Okay, so once again, I've tried to get it. Go over there, please. Thanks, bud. You big helper. Such a big helper today. Not being sarcastic at all. Okay, again, like I said before, try to get a sturdy baton. Go over there, bud. So in cross batoning like this, I tend to go on a little bit more of an angle than when the tree is standing. because I can. And again, flip it over. There's no point in trying to do it all from one side, one angle. Okay, and obviously guys, this isn't the most efficient way to do things, right? Can you go lay down? The most efficient way to do things Oh my goodness, is to have multiple tools and use those multiple tools for their intended purpose. But everybody wants one knife to rule them all, eh? Try to remember to put my knife away every single time. I don't know what mishaps. As you can see, the curls pretty fancy too. I'm just pulling them off or letting them fall on top of my sit pad. That's my favorite way to do it, so I don't have to try to keep them on or anything. But you could. These are my fast Canadian shavings. Sometimes you can pull them off with a thing attached like that. And then that's good for fire starting because you can control where your fire is going to go. I could light this over here and bring it to my fire. So that's a keeper for sure. Scout, what are you doing? This is wood, homie. Another way of telling that this wood is good to go is a natural check, as I've learned from Morris Kahansky's book, Bushcraft, Northern Bushcraft. He calls it a check. That was a long time ago now, but that's where I originally heard it from. The key to making shavings this way is just to try to barely skim your blade along the wood until you want it off, obviously. You can make some really, really fine shavings this way. Really nice shavings. This wood is super nice, like very clean. The right amount of seasoned. There's no real decay and no green. Perfect. Look at those curls. Look at those curls, boy. All right. Again, I'm just kind of like pry it off so I get a little platform with it. Brat tat tat. I'm gonna do this until I have this much curls. So Adventure Sworn Bushcraft Co. has been around for quite a few years. They are out of upstate New York. An American made, run, owned business. Good guys.
for sure. Their knives are pretty sought after. I'm not sure how he's doing their, his website right now or his ordering books. I think he does a run of knives and then post them for sale. Okay, I'm almost done here. Yeah, I'm gonna call that done. Cool, let's get this fire going. Here you can see my amount of shavings. Lots of nice airy, big curls. I'm probably going to take one of the pieces that I split off with uh, like this one. This is probably the best one. And I'll light this and transfer it over to these guys. There she goes. I set it underneath the shavings. We got a quick fire, boys. Boys and girls. <clears throat> ba bam, son. Get all that on there all at once. No time for farting around, you know? No farting. Emerald's not here. That's not so bad. That swell on the end really lets you chop. truncated or cross batoned a couple pieces off here now fed them into the fire and I've got this much length left so what I think I might do I don't know I might see if I can split it lengthways then I can break pieces easier with my hands we'll see we're just all playing around right this is just practicing and testing this knife out a bit so right in the middle I get it set I don't know that you're actually supposed to do that on the pommel, but whatever. So I got a nice split going down. Just gonna take it easy and continue to do that down a little bit farther and farther as we go. So I wanna stay in the same split though. could go get a piece of wood and keep the split open with that that would make sense but again this isn't really anything we're just playing around nope right through onto a knot I'm gonna cut through the knot awesome That's a decent piece. If I were to split that there. Now all I have to do now all I have to do I just threw a bunch of logs on that fire and while it's going I think it's a good idea to come out here and get what I need. I need to get one sapling, one green sapling Preferably a maple because I'm going to use it to be cooking bannock on and I also need to use it to make a pot hook. But I figure I can make all of the components of both of those things out of one sapling, one maple sapling. This is the perfect one. I'm going to cut it down and I'll show you exactly why back at camp.
perfect. Back at the camp. So much warmer over here, man. This this fire, this reflector, this back part, it all just kind of circles the air and it's I don't know, man, 10 degrees warmer over here. As soon as I came and sat down, I felt warm. So anyways, so here's a piece I cut just now. You saw how I cut it, bent it over, used the uh just like a push cut, but it made it a very 45 like a beaver chew almost like a, on an angle so that's good because I'll, I'll use that to stick into the ground already so I don't even need to make a point on the end of it half halfway done so I want my I'm gonna make a Burtonsville rig um, pot hanger again from the Morris Kahansky book bushcraft so what we need is a piece that goes into the ground and it should be well you know what About that long, about arm length long for my, my situation right now because it's going to go into the ground a little bit and then I do need a piece of this to cook my bannock on that's higher up. I'm going to cut, cut it about arm length right now. And the way I'm going to cut it, I'm just going to make a series of cuts into it, uh, again on an angle, and I'm going to snap it off. And the sap is a little frozen, so it's not going to be going as easy as if it was in the in the summertime but again you can see how I'm doing it I, I'm the work is done on the first like inch and a half two inches of the blade right because that's where I get the most leverage I'm not going to cut out here it doesn't make any sense I'm cutting here because I have more power and I'm also using my hands well behind but I'm using my second thumb to help with the cuts right again I'm just going to go in and around and deep never really any need to always go through the whole thing if you just break it around and then kind of or cut it around and kind of just break it it works totally fine so this piece is going to go over to the side for now okay so that first piece I cut off was for the, the stand right the uh, thing to prop it up what I'm doing now is actually making the hanger itself so you see my see the twig that's coming out here this is going to be my hook. So this twig gets cut off right about right about there. So that's you can see how that'll turn into my hook. And then I've just been scoring around like I did before. There we go. Oh, perfect. The next thing we need to do is make a notch on the back of the pot hanger. So here's the front, and I would call this the back. I want to make it about three quarters of the way up. I've already measured, and that's about where I want it to sit. You can make multiple uh, notches. The sun is so bright, I can't see in my LCD monitor to see if uh, things are in focus or not. It's pretty crazy. Anyway, so again, here's the back, right? So opposite side of the pot hanger itself. I want to make a score and X. See, I'm kind of holding my blade up on the blade itself. You get a lot of a lot of control that way. So I'm rolling the blade, rolling the stick at the same time, making this X. I'm going to carve this little X out. This this X isn't enough yet. This is just you're gonna to have to baton it or carve it in really good. But this is just a um, guide. I'm gonna show you the full step here. So what I like to do is really make it deep so that there's less chance of popping off uh, the, the pot hanger. I've never really actually had it fall off. It's pretty secure. So again, this, this wood is frozen. The sap inside it is frozen. I'm gonna baton it a touch. You don't wanna go too far. I don't even wanna go to the middle because I don't wanna weaken it, right? I don't wanna go to the middle of the, the piece of wood. Just light, lightly batoning it, and then carving down into where those, those are basically stop cuts, the baton marks. 
Okay. It's pretty good. Just trim it up on the inside like that. Make the, the, the piece smooth almost. There. So you can see there how it kind of works. The tip holds on, it just kind of works. Just putting the finishing touches on. This is my stick that's going to get stabbed into the ground that the pot hanger itself is going to rest on. So one end of the stick has that pointed end. There you can see it. And the other is gonna be like a flathead screwdriver. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Right there, thin and straight across. If it's jagged, if it's a little uh, messed up from batoning or whatever, just cut straight across. Make it nice and clean. That will sit on there beautifully. All right, so we're gonna stab this into the, into the frozen ground now. We'll see how that works. Not sure how well this is gonna go. It's not. The ground is straight frozen and that, that's to be expected. It's freaking merch. So what I am gonna do is stick it underneath my log here to prop it up and then I will have something in front of it to hold it up. Uh, grab another log like maybe like this. Oh, it might be a bit much. Let's go. There we go. So I'll have that there, have the log behind it to hold it there. This log to prop it up. I'll have my pot hanger on there and it is nowhere near high enough. So I can do a couple things. Try and make this higher, which I can probably do like that. That works, that's fine. That's <laughs> quick fix, quick fix. Okay, so I gotta get my pot, we'll hang it on there, see how, see how good it is situated. I got some eggs and some bannock mix. So I'm going to cook these eggs up um, my favorite way, which is kind of poachy, double boily style, where I put some water in my billy can, put the dish in the top, and hang, put the eggs in there and hang it up over the fire. I am going to put a little bit of butter in today so my eggs don't stick too bad. There we go. I will melt that in. I guess I'll melt it in right now just over the fire before I hang it up. That's good. Good and melted. We're going to get both the eggs in there. Bam some and a bam some. Those eggshells smell like crap and they're burning like a deer antler or like a fingernail kind of smell. I gotta get some more wood on there. And make up my bannock, my bannock. You ever see that Mitch video a while ago? Him and Malcolm are out, they're making bannock and he keeps calling it bannock. <laughs> and he's almost like yelling at Malcolm because Malcolm wants to cut it. And he's like, oh, you have to break it or else, bah, bad luck, bah. This guy, this guy. You must break the bannock, my friend of many seasons. For anyone who didn't really understand how I set this up, this log here, this is a sturdy, heavy log. This, this, this log isn't going anywhere. So my pole, my pot hanger, is coming down, stuck into the ground a bit, and underneath this log. And this prop log in front is just propping it up uh, at a higher pitch. If I had this log oh, farther down, farther, it would be at a lower pitch, lower angle. I've got my eggs on, slow cooking, because I haven't even started my bannock yet. I might eat them at two different, two different times too. I'm, I'm gonna be out here for quite a while today. Well, it's 1.30 already, holy crap. Anyways, here's my, my stick that I cut off of the rest of that maple. 
and I think I'm going to just skin it. Just take the, the bark right off of it. I'm going to wrap my bannock right around it and cook it on the stick there. I want to take the bark off because there can be bacteria and microbes and stuff like that in the bark that in all honesty probably aren't going to do anything to you. But that's where they are and it's super easy to get it off so why not. You obviously want to make sure that you're using a wood that's not toxic either. Like I wouldn't be using blue beech for this right? because you're not supposed to cook on the flames of a blue beech. So maple is a pretty safe bet. Ash is safe. Any kind of fruit wood obviously is good. Might impart some taste. But keep it Canadian. We'll just just do maple, eh? Just keep it Canadian, do a little maple. You know what? This is probably a good time as any. I have a giveaway to announce. Like I said earlier in the video, I wanted to keep some of you guys hanging around to listen to it. 250,000 subscribers. I'm at 247 right now, and I am sure in two days it'll be at 250. So I think it's about time for a giveaway. I never did one for 100, and then 200 came up right away. Super quick, within a couple months. It was, it was crazy. So anyways, we'll get it out of the way right now. Lately, you've been seeing me use the Heavy Cover Canteen set, the Titanium set, and they are not cheap. And I've heard, you guys have voiced your opinions to me about that quite a few times. Well, look what I got. So in here is a full set. It's got the canteen, the two lids, or sorry, the three lids. Here's one lid for your cup, one lid for your canteen, second lid for your canteen on it. Canteen itself. Stuff weighs nothing. This is a, hello. This is nothing, you know what I mean? And it's as durable as you are gonna find. I guarantee that. And then you get your cup, your titanium cup, okay? This costs $155 American, which translated into Canadian, right around 200 bucks with an extra 50 bucks shipping, and that's if your package doesn't get stolen and you don't get charged for customs and all the very, very fun things that Canadians get to deal with when ordering things. But this is for my subscribers. It doesn't matter if you're Canadian or American or Norwegian or Yugoslavian. Do they have computers in Yugoslavia? I'm sure they do. Anyways, what you need to do, you need to be a subscriber and you need to, you need to like this video and you need to leave a comment, a question comment. In about a week, I'm going to be doing a question and answer video, a proper question and answer video. I've never done one. I've done update videos. I've done about me videos. I've done a live chat on Facebook. I've never done a question and answer video proper format. So your, question, your comment needs to be a question that I can answer on the next video. Do you understand? Subscribe to my channel, comment on this video with a question. Sorry. <laughs> Be a subscriber, like this video, and comment on this video with this with a question that I can answer on my next video. I also have this will go for a second the second question. So this is number one. It's the first prize. Heavy cover. This is an authentic Mora Bushcraft Black. It was passed down from Doug outside to myself. We both both used it quite a bit. There's nothing wrong with it. This thing is shaving sharp, sharper than probably most of my other knives because I haven't used it too much lately. This will go to the second place winner with the second most relevant or second coolest or second most meaningful answer, question. If we're playing Jeopardy, it'd be a different story. And then also this one tigress pouch goes to them as well. So this is a pretty cool pouch. I've kept my wallet in here before. I've kept my little fishing tackle in here. I've used this on a bunch of camps, but two zippers, uh, Molly on the back, pretty cool pouch. Runner-up, we'll get this. So, two, two, uh, two winners, two giveaways, I guess. No requirements other than subscri subscriber, like the video, comment a question that I can answer on my next video, my next video in a week. I hope that makes sense. Hope you guys are interested in that. That's a pretty cool giveaway, man. That's a freaking 
what is that bushcraft black I don't know 60 bucks or so and the other thing is 150 so over 200 bucks split up that's not so bad that's not so bad right